right, our Super Battle of the Surrogates continues. We've got uh, people making the last pitch in this, uh, this day before the election tomorrow. Of course, it's so important, and Iowa... F- Seems to to factor in very heavily. The, mm-hmm. the the votes in Iowa seem to be counting a lot more than some other states, right or wrong, uh, because we are a swing state. With us on the phone right now is uh, the former state chair of the Iowa Republican Party and uh, one of the co-owners of the Barnstormers, too, Matt Strawn. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. to talk to you. Hey, gang. How are things over in Cedar Rapids? Things Great. are good. Nice start to the day here. Now, as I was saying, you know, we're, we're doing some some sort of surrogate conversations this morning. You're going, you're in the bracket up against Anne Hathaway, all right? Boy, it's a good thing this is radio and not TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, let's, let's start with, uh, with what we started with her with, which has to do with uh, really encouraging everybody to get out and vote tomorrow and the importance of that, Matt. No, you're exactly right, and especially for Iowans. You know, there are 40-some other states that would love to be in our position to to really be the determining state on who the next president is going to be. And I know we get tired of the ads, we get tired of the phone calls, but there's no other place on the planet that has this kind of democracy. And, and I really, of course, I want people to go vote for Mitt Romney and our Republican ticket. Mm-hmm. But the important thing is, you know, get, off, get up off the couch, get out there and vote, and make your voice heard. I saw some place, and I don't know if you can really f- even, I, I don't know how true it is, but they were sort of factoring the weight of an Iowa vote versus some other states, you know, in terms of percentage. And it was just like, it, it's almost, it, it's kind of like a tenfold vote almost. No, exactly. When you look at the candidates themselves, they don't go to California, they don't go to Texas, they don't go to New York. Well, unless they're raising money, those mm-hmm. are the states they go to. But when it comes to actually trying to convince someone to put a, to fill in an oval by their name, you know, I was the place to be. Well, go ahead and make a pitch uh, for those who you think ought to vote for uh, for Mitt Romney. What is it about Mitt Romney that um, that you find attractive? Why do you think he'd be a good president? Sure, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm a Benton County farm kid, you know, just to the west of you guys over there. And, you know, a couple of things I learned growing up on the farm is that you don't spend money you don't have, that there's no substitute for hard work and kind of putting a plan together for the future, whether you're, whether you're on the farm, whether you're working, whether you're trying to raise your family. And quite frankly, what we've seen the last four years of the presidency with Barack Obama, I don't think that tells us where we want to go for the next four years. So for folks in Cedar Rapids and eastern Iowa all across the country, you know, Mitt Romney is somebody that understands how a business runs. He understands that small businesses are the ones that employ two-thirds of Iowans. And I think he's got a plan to start moving us in the right direction. So that's why, even though, yes, I'm the former Republican chair, you know, that's why I'm going around the state, making sure people understand the stakes and, and really get this country moving again. We need our swagger back as Americans. Mm-hmm. And we really seem to kind of have our heads hung down a little bit. And I think with a Romney presidency, we can do that. When you, when you were the chair of the party, that had to be what, – what kind of a – was it just for the year, Matt, or were you there – what was your, your tenure? No, I was, elected, I was elected for two terms following uh, – right after the 2008 election. So, uh, so I guess I had, have a little experience when Republicans had their heads down after that 2008 race. And what we found, one reason we were so successful, is that we were just out there letting Iowans know whether they're Republicans or Democrats, you know, kind of what the principles of our party were. And quite frankly, we're a party that believes that as individuals – you're only limited by the, you know, the talents you're given at your birth and your, your guts to go out there and take risks with them. And, yeah, you make sure you have a safety net for folks. But go out there and believe in the individuals. You know, and we've got, you know, gosh, half the kids coming out of college today either can't find jobs or they certainly can't find jobs that they were educated to do. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, that's why I'm out there making sure Iowans understand the stakes of this election. And, uh, you know, one thing I did, I did joke, I was telling somebody last week, you know, the good thing with the Romney campaign, you know, we've got a bunch of Iowans out there talking to fellow Iowans. You know, Dan Gable was with Mitt Romney. I ran into Ed Podolak the other day who was making the rounds for Republicans. And the Democrats, God love Anne Hathaway, I love her movies. You know, they bring in her, they bring in Costanza, you know, they bring in the kid from Dodgeball. Well, you know what? We got Iowans talking to Iowans on the Romney campaign. Now, going in with with that sort of surrogates thing that we were talking about, I'm going to go through the looking glass with you a little bit because I, I'm going to try to keep this as fair as I can. And again, sure. Matt, I've been accused of, of having a pro- Obama agenda and a pro Romney agenda at the same time on this radio station. <laughs> because of the red pants and the red you're doing blues. Something right then. Sure. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so now I got to ask you what I asked Ann. How about your wedding? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we had to make sure we kept the helicopters away and the popcorn. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, my goodness. It's a <laughs> Who did you I wear? Uh, I actually got married. I married a uh, girl from Philly, so I got married on the East Coast. So oh, I, right. you know, we had to load up all the. 
all the folks uh, flying in from Cedar Rapids. So, uh, so you know, we I guess it's a big city wedding for us. But, uh, but yeah, pretty, probably pretty modest compared to, uh, to whatever Ms. Hathaway was talking about. Well, when, and, and being the former <laughs> chair of the party, obviously, you know, you're always going to be involved. How how officially or unofficially are you involved? What uh, talk to me a little bit about? Because I know you're you're also have an involvement with the Barnstormers and 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 other interests that you have. Are all of your efforts right now just as a citizen or or? Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, we've got uh, part owner of the Barnstormers here in Des Moines. In fact, uh, just last week we signed uh, Dace Richardson, former Hawkeye lineman. So I got to get in a plug oh, for that. Yeah. Uh, but it's you know Brad Banks we had as our quarterback a couple seasons ago. So it's you know fun to make sure those Hawkeyes still have a chance to play. Mm-hmm. And then we still have our family farm operation um, over there in Benton County, just uh, just north of Van Horn and uh, south of Benton. Uh, for anybody that's listening. Well, you've seen it. You've seen it all through these years. How do you rate this election cycle from the standpoint of yes? You even started a little bit with people are tired of the of the ads and all of that. With all the money that's being thrown into this, and this is a weirder year just because of some of the PAC money stuff. How do you rate what you're seeing if you step outside of the process and from the partisan standpoint? How do you how do you view this process this year? You know, two things. One, uh, despite all the millions that have been spent, and trust me, I'm as tired of it as anybody. Yeah, I'm sitting at, uh, at brunch yesterday here in Des Moines, and there's two ladies at the next table that are still talking about who they're not sure who they're going to vote for. You know, part of you wants to chuckle. It's like, all right, what more do you need after all the millions of dollars that have been spent in the candidates here? Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is people start tuning it out, quite frankly, when there's all this noise. Mm-hmm. And the bigger problem, I think, long term, you know, take a place like Lynn County. With all these ads going on, you know, how does that help uh somebody like a Renee Schulte or some of those local officials actually try and get their word out when you have all these presidential candidates, the presidential candidates, you know, firing ads back and forth at each other. It makes it more difficult for local candidates to get out there and talk to the voters. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's go out with what we started with. Uh, as we did with Ann, encouraging people to vote one more time, if you would, Ann. Uh, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt. That, that, that's you, the first and only time that confusion will probably ever happen. You just in my got life. confused with um, Anne Hathaway. Oh. Yeah, uh, you know, folks, if you want to get the country moving in the right direction, Mitt Romney's the choice. And if you need to know where your polling location is, call our office there on Collins Road, four three one two seven eight one, and let's get the country moving again. All right, Matt, we're grateful for your time this morning. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a great one. Appreciate right. it. That's Matt Strawn, former state chair of the Iowa Republican Party.